So we had the MHL booth, and uh, you're talking about productivity over here. Yeah, so uh, welcome to uh, Mobile World Congress for MHL booth, and we'll show you the uh, latest in productivity here. Uh, here we're showing the SmartBook application. I'd like to introduce you to Gordon, a founder and lead developer for Andronium OS. Thank you, Rob. So what we have today here is the MHL SmartBook concept that we're partnering with uh, Silicon Image Develop. So on the left side, we have a Android smartphone that's running um, stop Android. Um, user can use stop Android. Stop Android. What is this phone? Uh, this is uh, this is actually a reference design from Silicon Image. Um, so it's a, it's, a Reagan Tech reference design. Yeah. So uh, this uh, 6582 quad core MediaTek inside. Yes. Um, it's relatively low end, uh, designing for more emerging markets, uh, 2G, 3G capability. This is like the Android One spec. This is a future-proof Android. Um, so, but yeah. but then, how did you modify? Yes. What uh, do you do? We did custom modification. Uh, we added a uh, guest OS on top called Andromium OS. So what we have now is a stock launcher. So did you did you modify Android to support this? Andrew? Uh, minimum modification. Um, most of it is done with partnership with MHL. Um, what we have here, as soon as we plugged in, the laptop dock here is going to go into a desktop productivity mode. Yeah? So um, is this, is this a, a different UI on top of Android? It's a guest OS on top it's of different it. different. OS. It's a guest OS. So it runs on top of Android using a lot of Android standard capabilities. But what we did is we added the ability to multitask within Android as well. So so you use the, the, the base the base layers of Linux that are also Android, yes. but you put more different stuff on top. Is it related with what kind of Linux? Um, it is still very uh, very much Linux kernel, very much Android OS. Uh, we added a custom UI rendering, some memory management capabilities, as well as some uh, app tracking, uh, lifecycle management. Um, so for example, what we have here, um, it's a web browser um, running simultaneously with a file explorer. Now, is this WebKit? Uh, this is uh, WebKit using Chrome rendering engine. So it's a Blink latest... Uh... Uh, unfortunately, this is 4.4.2, yeah. so it doesn't use the latest engine yet. Uh, nice. 5.0 would be using latest engine. So you have uh, multi-window? Yeah, multi-window support. Um, and then we can go into, let's say, uh, music or video, and we can... Um, let's go into movie, that might be easier. Um, we can bring... Do you have a hardware accelerated video playback? Yes, absolutely. So this is 720p video. Um, you know, without hardware acceleration, you can never get it to run on such a low-end device. So this is uh, it's using the full capability of Android device underneath it, with all the GPU acceleration, uh, quad-core, um, quad-core thread management. It's just the fact that we added custom code on top and allowed it in order to multitask. So can you talk more about the guest OS, the guest OS mode? Um, so since when did you start working on this? Um, this is a project that I started, um, that I was thinking about before I left Google. Um, so um, originally I pitched this, OM, this idea to Google to do it internally, but they're past, so I decided to leave uh, Google to pursue this project on my own. What were you doing at Google? The secret? I was, uh, it's not much secret security. So security. cloud security. Cloud security. Yeah. Not in the Android building. Not in the Android building. Uh, different different department. Uh, Google Play. Uh, yeah, the, uh, Google. It's it's funny. It's an awesome company, but they have a limited amount of engineers working on Android. Yeah. Right? It's very small. Group. It's not very small, but they're very focused. Right? So they don't usually um, they don't work across a lot of borders around. Um, they usually like to focus on the project they're working on. Um, so for me, it was a project I was interested in doing and I wanted to work on part-time. But Google kind of passed on the concept, so I decided to do it on my own. So cloud security, does, that means uh, your solution is secure and it uh -oh. uses the cloud or not? It's, um, it's for different companies. So this is actually, this is a offline uh, OS. So in fact, uh, we're actually not connected to the internet at the moment. Um, it, it looks a little bit like an Ubuntu. It does have, um, it's designed to be a mix of OS X and Windows. So a mix example, between OS X and Windows? The look and feel. So for example, we have the taskbar on the bottom. 
we have the start menu that has expanded app selections. And then we have app shortcuts on the side. You have what on the side? Uh, shortcuts for application shortcuts. Yeah. Next to the start menu. Um, everything is resizable, movable. How about the windowing uh, uh, manager, uh, the hardware acceleration and the UI of the windowing? Absolutely. What, what are you doing? Um, it's, it is uh, another um, software toolkit that we're using that um, Android itself does, that's lacked, so we developed on top of it. Um, it is using hardware acceleration, so... What is it? It is, is it based on something that's open source and out there? It is, actually. It's what also Samsung uses for the multi-window. So, it's, um, for example, Facebook uses this, uh, Samsung uses it for their multi-window support. Facebook? Facebook. For, um, for fi Facebook uh, phone? For messaging. For the messaging app? Yeah, so when you open the message, there's a chat, uh, there's a chat head that's yeah. also based on the same... That's an API thing. for Android kind of stuff, right? It's a, it's a custom API, not default. So it's not a standard Android implementation, it's a custom library. And then same Can this be more Samsung. optimized, more improved, more speedy? Um, well, put it this way, this is on a very low-end device. Right? This is a quad-core Cortex-A7? Yeah, quad Cortex-A7. What, what more can you do? What um, more can be done? Let's say you, you get a ton of resources to to smooth it out and make it like the next Windows. So I what think, will you do? Uh, the next step for us is the releasing the SDK and then the App Store. Fundamentally, that allows third-party developer to come in and take advantage of the old native OS underneath. Again, we're talking about a lot of um, process management, application management, so they have to use a custom SDK, the Andromium SDK, in order to write the app for it. And you, can you go to the Start menu again? Sure. So, in the Start menu, are you showing the Android apps that are on the phone, or are you showing something yeah. else? All three. So, there's Andromium apps, which is apps uh, written using um, Andromium SDK. There there's is some Andromium apps, which one? Um, so, like the browser? Any, browser, File Explorer, we can bring up calendars. Calculator too? Yeah, calculators, and then there's a Minesweeper, it's kind of a demo game. Yeah. And all this we're running on the quad core Cortex yeah. A7. And then multitasking at the same time. So as you multitasking, can see, you have a video running in the background. Video running. Um, the phone is right there. Day. You cannot still do Android while it's doing this, no? Um, no, the phone. You is have to choose one or the other? So it's in here. So the you can have the phone screen on and off uh, by design, by Normally the screen is on, but uh, we made additional uh, modification to make sure that the screen stays off on the laptop dock. So uh, is this this is a mock-up display? No, it's there. No, no, it's there. So, so you can uh, see it's, it's a live, it's live mirroring. Live mirroring. Could yeah. you do keep Android here while this this happens there? Um, it's currently not part of the development lifecycle. We're not looking at capability yet, but it might be something down the line once we have the first version out. And what would be required to have that work? Is more performance, more uh, More performance, also the rendering kit has to be changed. Right now, Android is not designed to be rendered um, live simultaneously on two different screens with two different content. It's more um, designed for mirroring capability. So how do you do that guest OS? Did anybody ever do this before? Is this no. how uh, Ubuntu did the, the dual uh, switch? Actually, to... Ubuntu do OS side by side. So they, um, they run Ubuntu as uh, a separate OS from Android. So what that means is the fact that they use twice as much RAM, they have to entirely sealed off from each other. So um, you reuse the Android parts? Absolutely. Uh, how hard is it to do that solution? Um, is that like a magic that you're doing? It's, or did you it's just... a lot of the work is basically put into it to make it that work. Uh, work. In order to make it as a guest OS, we make sure the fact that we play well with Android. So we're not, you know, like we respect their memory management lifecycle, we respect their network, uh, the network capability as well. And then we can actually run Android apps, as you can see. How did it look? It would be a full screen app. So, so you have a supported apps on yeah. the... And then like, we can bring up something. Every Android app is okay? Most Android apps. So some Android apps doesn't work. Um, doesn't work as because well. there's no touch. Um, some of them override the screen ca uh, display capability, so they don't display the same kind of information. Which one was that? So this is a uh, WPS Office. So it's That's a big uh, one. Yeah. So it's a uh, open office uh, form. That's a big Android yeah. app. And you can see they can actually support you know pretty advanced uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, mm -hmm. We can go back. We can do. We can do uh, PowerPoint. 
Oh, you're still in the app. You're there. So this is a pretty, pretty big app. It's probably like 50 megabytes or 100 or something. More than that, it actually, um, in order to run this app, we actually have to shut down all the Andromeda map and free up enough RAM. So don't forget, How this does is. That work? Um, so we basically, Android will send a signal to the rest of the application stack that will lower memory. Please, you know, clean up after yourself, making sure that you know you don't crash the entire OS. When that happened, we actually we actually closes all the available apps. And that's automatic, it's instant? It's something we designed into the OS, so it's custom behavior. So and uh, you instantly resume back to where you were, everything? Um, some, when it cleans up, we can resume, but on most apps that they're running, they should be able to go back. So for example, we can see that it should go back to a PowerPoint. Right? Right there. So we try to keep the app the user is working mm -hmm. on currently as the most, um, as the most urgent app. And then everything else we can do some stuff. Nice. It looks really good. So then you have, uh, let's say, uh, Gmail. It's not your personal Gmail, right? No, it's. Uh, I think it's a work email. It's, oh, it's not even set up. So. Okay. Yeah. And then it's going to look like uh, if it was Android. And then you have yeah. this little Andromium bar on the top. So this is uh, what we do to allow to multitask with uh, Android apps. So it allows you to minimize the apps. Um, oh, and it's still there. Yeah, and then you can close. So it's a way to work together with Android, uh, standard Android apps. Of course, if you use Andromium SDK and create Andromium apps, then you get additional capability like resizing, application management. Uh, you can also get like app information sharing between apps as well. This is really fantastic. But Thank so you. Uh, you have a Kickstarter. What happened? What did you do? Um, we made it about two thirds of our campaign go. Um, we were not able to uh, be successful funding on Kickstarter. What was the What was the goal? Uh, the goal was 100,000 to create a dock um, that you can plug your smartphone into. Yeah. Uh, since then, we kind of working with different partners as well. Right now, working with Silicon Image for this project, uh, the smartphone project. It looks um, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, what, what is the biggest uh, request, feature request from the people seeing your Kickstarter page? I think a lot of people want it for their phone. Like fundamentally, we started with Samsung phone. People say, you know, I want it for my HTC phone, I want it for my Sony phone, I want it for my you know, Motorola phone as well. Um, can you make it open source so everybody can figure it out? We open source the SDK, so that way people can develop for it. Uh, we're going to try to work with our manufacturers and then also work with the developer world to make sure we can hit as much phone as You don't want to make the whole Andromium open source? Um, maybe down the Because if you do, line. you'll be number one. You'll be like dominating everything. Maybe down the line, but currently we're only planning to open source the SDK part. What's um, the business model also? Are you going to license? We're going to work with some uh, manufacturers to do uh, some customization for their device. That might be one way of doing revenue. Another way we're doing revenue is we plan to have an app store. We might do the same kind of cut Google Play Store and Apple App Store does, 70-30 cut. Uh, we also have some uh, discussion with wireless um, telecoms, the fact that we're going to work with them to do a revenue sharing as well. Um, that is still in discussion, and so we don't have a lot to uh, report on at this point. Did the uh, Lollipop help with this in any way? Uh, actually, it helps the fact has better security for the web browser. So a lot of security for the web browser. web browser. But unfortunately, Lollipop also restricted a lot of the OS. So now we have to work harder in order to make uh, this uh, guest OS is concept this happen. Or no? uh, this is uh, KitKat. This is KitKat right here. Yeah. Do you have it working on a Lollipop? We do. Uh, we have users on our public beta, which is on uh, Play Store right now. It's running on their Nexus device, so Nexus 4, and Nexus 5. Um, the feedback has been uh, just as good, so there's no been no issues on Lollipop. It's just the fact that we have to make some extensive code changes in Did order you say to support. Play Store. Google Play Store. So you just install from Play Store, it works. Yes. Uh, you don't fact, need to change the firmware. Uh, no. So like right now we're running it on a Samsung Note, uh, Note 4. In fact, they just download it from the Play Store and run it as it is. And this is the UI you can get right here. Let's see. This one has uh, wireless connectivity, so we can actually yes. see it and join. Can you also uh, launch, uh, do you have Chrome? Yes. How does it look? 
It goes full screen? It goes full screen. Uh, it's by design. Any Android app would go full screen, but we still multitask side by side with any Android apps. Nice. So that, that you can only multitask side by side the Andromeda maps? Exactly. Uh, because the fact that we they write the app, we are S, our SDK, yeah. so we can control their uh, capability versus standard Android apps, we cannot. Right. And we do like this. So we can compare BBC in both browsers. Yeah. One is optimized for like kind of like desktop use. Yeah, exactly. and the other one is more like uh, it's gonna show even the mobile page, I guess maybe. Um, maybe CNN will show mobile. Well, it says yeah. BBC, so it is on yeah, mobile. mobile. But you are default to desktop mode right here. Yeah. Cool. How do you full screen? Uh, plus. Plus. There we go. Cool. Very nice, and then you can always just come back to Chrome right here. Cool. And once you have this installed, um, so it's kind of like the behavior is kind of like a home replacement. Um, it's not a home replacement. It's a uh, it's an OS that launches when it detects all the capability. So it needs to be connected to an external monitor. It has to have a keyboard and mouse. Also, it has your power plugged in. So you use a lot of native code. Uh, no, not exactly. Um, we use some native code to manage the window framework management, but most of it is still standard SDK. So, not very few things uses NDK. At this but point. how can you launch another OS just by going through the Play Store? Um, the main thing is the well, it's not a Play Store uh, per se. It's the connection. So we detect all the components are there, and then we launch we launch our OS as an app on top. Um, it's just the fact that, for example, our OS including um, task management capabilities as well as uh, information. Um, all that window stuff framework. just works. It just works. In and, fact, uh, that we're asking our users. Is this a lollipop or not? That's a lollipop. It's a Kit Kat. Still. Kit Kat. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so we're asking it, uh, to try it out and then let us know. This is Sony here. Yeah. Are you on this? Uh, so Sony is demoing uh, MHL running on a 4K display. But you're not on this phone. Uh, we can. Uh, it's just you not can. Currently running. Yeah. But so, if it's just on Play Store, why doesn't it run on every MHL well, device? For one is the fact that a lot of it, you still have to have the cable and have to have an external keyboard and mouse. And not many people has a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse lying around yet. Um, and also MHL, they require a special MHL to uh, HDMI connector. You can buy um, online or anywhere else. Yeah, but so every MHL phone supports this or, or only some? Every? Uh, every MHL phone that has at least KitKat 4.4.2 in the box. And able to run how many people installed your app so far? Right now, beta testers, a little bit over 2,000 in the, about 20 days so far, beta testing. So it's there, everybody can download it now for free? They can try it out. They can try it out for free, absolutely. All right. Right, that's fantastic. It's really cool. And uh, if you don't have MHL, can you still do the Andromium on the phone only? Or um, we are. It doesn't trigger if you don't have a MHL. We allow you to manually launch it. Um, let me close this. So right now, some of our users are trying out on Chromecast. Uh, using Chromecast, you can still get the same capability, except there's a little bit more added latency. So if you're if you have a good uh, home uh, wireless network setup, you can still use it. Uh, but you know, gaming is a little bit harder using Chromecast. But for standard web browsing, uh, watching videos, uh, Chromecast works absolutely fine. Cool. So um, I'm hoping to see a few hundred million. Oh, definitely. Of these. Um, how, how big do you think it's going to be? Uh, I MHL think, laptops. I think eventually this will be the form factor replace laptops and even desktop computers because smartphones nowadays are so powerful. You know, why carry additional you know laptop device? Why right? has a separate OS, has a separate hard drive when all you want is one device contain it all and then use it for you know different means. For example, productivity, gaming, or you know just on the go browsing. So I think this will be the form factor of the future. Already two or three years ago, the smartphones have overtaken laptop sales. Absolutely. And uh, now it's totally destroying laptop yeah. sales. I mean, nowadays, a cheap window laptop you know, comes with you know, dual core, two gigs of RAM. You know, a mid-range smartphone comes with you know, quad core and two gigs of RAM, right? And you have high-end smartphone and that's cheaper. going to be yeah, you know, four gigs of RAM. So you can include the laptop as a bundle. But Absolutely. cheaper than the Windows laptop. Absolutely. And people want this, they, and they want that. So you need both. Yeah. Um, you need a cool UI, cool software to make it work. 
So the long term is for the uh, smartphone plus smartphone project. Uh, Silicon Image is trying to launch this at a price point about $200, 250 dollars. So that's it. This is this is the box that yep. should be shipping. Um, Social network, network smart book. So there. Are there's a launch partner that they're still finalizing the detail on, uh, but it will be a large Android manufacturer that will be launching this, uh, probably starting in India, uh, maybe South America, and then South Pacific Asia in the beginning, and slowly move to uh, Europe and US at a later date. Nice, this is happening for sure, this is happening. Yes. So. And so, because you're still kind of like in a Kickstarter kind of mode, right? Yes. If you had all the resources that you wanted, if you were like, a, you know, they had a whole bunch of engineers, oh, yeah. what, what is the next thing you need to do? The next thing right now is we need to get the SDK ready. So the SDK right now is still being refined. We only use it for internal development. The next step is release it for external developers. So other Android developers can use our SDK to create an Andromia map. And then after that, we, once SDK is released, we can have an app store. We're going to put an app store out there. Uh, you, you know, developer can publish free apps or pay apps. And we have to have a payment system set up as well. So those are one step at a time. If we have unlimited resource, we would do all those today. Nice. And uh, so this is it. It's, it's coming out. Yeah. And. Uh, we are right here. Oh, sorry, there.